Happy Gaming Cup! HGC, everybody! We got another best of three in our Chinese tournament. So, on the left side, we got Team Jen with Stuko for heals. We got Chen actually in the game. So, yeah, we got Murden and Chen at the front line. It's Panda time. Li Ming and Grey Mane. Over on the right side of the map, the red team. Bai Zi Shua Hua. <laughs> Guys, I have no idea how to pronounce this. <laughs> uh, so I, I have no idea what I'm going to call them. I'm going to come up with something. But yeah, those boys, they are having an interesting composition. We are currently looking at Mei for the main tank. Hogger, Anna to help them. Tykes and then Hanzo in the back. Now, as already explained a little bit earlier, this is a tournament that is being hosted on the Chinese server. Not the Asian server, but the Chinese server. Because those Chinese servers are being shut down at the end of the week. Some political stuff, Blizzard didn't get some license or didn't extend it. There was just like some back and forth and at the end of the day they decided that they would cease activity or whatever. So uh, World of Warcraft servers and the Hero servers in China being shut down. The Asia servers where all of the previous tournaments that you've seen like the Skyline Cup for example have taken place. They are still available. It is really solely uh, political financial issue and that's all that there is to it so the chinese players can still play on the asia server but in order because this is the last week they host this tournament and we are getting a glimpse of them we're currently in the winner bracket this is the round of eight we have a best of three series and the loser will still have a chance later now as i said in one of the previous games this is all opening up an opportunity for us to check all of this out because of the time difference and also the problems of accessing the chinese server these games are casted from replays for me i don't know the results i haven't seen any of this so i'm casting this just as a normal game but it's the reason why we don't have a draft included in case that anybody was wondering. Draft information is not included by Blizzard. But it's pretty cool to just see some of the Chinese teams here. Now, keep in mind, it's pretty tough for us to tell which teams are how good which teams are. So there might be some skill discrepancies still in the earlier rounds of the tournament. That's usually something that then gets eliminated later. I mean, it's a tournament. Uh, obviously, the earlier round are little, our rounds are a little bit more one-sided. But it's kind of cool to see the panda here. Now, we have the wall at the bottom of the map already broken through. At the top, we're seeing a similar picture. Skin game is a little bit weak on the panda, I gotta say. I was at least expecting a Warmaster Chen, but I'm not getting any of that. So it's a three-man top lane pressure. And the red team is starting to make a play by moving nearly the entire team topside. So not too happy with a 2-3 split and the wall that they're losing here. But they're getting gray main. Grey main is down and got eliminated quickly here, so yeah, good for them. We got Chen currently on the Battle Beast. The shitty lizard. <laughs> There's no other name for it. This thing is so bad. And also, we had one for Tychus. So Tychus in the rhythm, we've seen it a few times now, but he actually goes for it. Every single time that's played on the Asia server or by one of the Chinese or Korean teams, I'm immediately asking myself if we're going to get drill. Because we've gotten a few drills lately. And in the rhythm was traditionally a talent that you would pick when you would go for drill. Since he started with a grenade build, I honestly expected him to either go for Master Assassin or for the bigger they are. Both of them would have been absolutely viable here. Tychus is level 4 in general is uh, a talent here where you can go for multiple options. But we get a couple of stacks together and we're going to see how this is going to work out for him. But either way, first objective is up, so time to see which team is able to put a little bit ahead. They still really like to play their Tigers, even on the map like Battlefield of Eternity. We've seen this in the Skyline Cup too. But the halftime show goes to Team Gen. So they are able to lock the early game victory in. But of course, who takes Immortal number one is still to be decided. Interesting part is that the red team actually caught up much, much more than I expected them to. But it's literally a race. I mean, both of the teams are not really interested in going for team fights too much. I suppose it's going to kick in once we have level 10 abilities on both sides. But, yeah, there we are. They are starting to take this one down. Red team loses objective number one. And as long as... Oh, if they can get... Yes, they get Anna. Nice. So, the red team has lost the objective, lost their healer, and they might lose more. Maze in serious trouble here, and she dies as well. There's two heroes down. On top of that, we have the bot lane pressure with the immortal, and it seems like the panda is trying for a kill and might even get it. Yeah, they do. 
Bruiser on his Chen is making it out of the fight. That's four kills to three. They just dropped Hogger. And now they have a push at the top lane. They have still one at the bottom of the map. Hanzo is completely alone top side. Was definitely not prepared to, say, for, to face off against this many opponents. And he died too. And what do we have here? The Combat Tactician. Now I'm surprised that we get quarterback. If you go into a build that is very specifically targeting the auto attack, then why not start things off with the level 1 and extend your range a little bit? That's a bit wild. So if you really... I mean, I don't have anything necessarily against this particular build. I don't really think it's the best. And in the European scene, you pretty much don't see it. But if you want to go through one of those auto attack styles that we've now sometimes seen on the Asian server, then you could have gone into your level one press the advantage go for the extended range and then just play around that so that would have definitely helped them a bit more than what we're seeing right now as it is the blue team is pulling a bit ahead they already took the first four down they have an opportunity to maybe even get another structure destroyed at the bottom of the map ah grayman is dead though but they get a counter kill against hanzo so it's a trade at the bot lane and since everyone on the side of team gen is now pressing here uh, it means that it is still a numbers advantage for them because Hoga is still at the top lane. Now, on one side, that's pretty decent for them because he's now able to get some experience back and he's also destroying the wall. But it is, of course, exposing some vulnerabilities at the bottom of the map too. And level 10, yeah, that is a bit worrisome. Because there is a decent gap. This is a pretty solid gap and that is highly problematic. The Panda in the meantime, with the Elusive Brawler and the Deadly Strike. Yeah, storm Ball, Zoning Storm Ball. Clear Zoning Storm Ball right here. He zoned them out, just wanted to make sure that he can't get away here. But with the objective popping up and level 10 in their hands, this should be an easy win on the objective for Team Gen. And apparently they want to have a kill too. They're starting to move in here, they go for May. And yeah, Stormbolt, Torga. Uh, he's still at the top, he's not here. But they are wasting a little bit of time. They only have one guy on the Immortal. They were hoping for kills, which they didn't get. So at the end of the day, it's a little bit of a victory for the red team because they're now starting to catch up slightly. Six kills to four, but a halftime show victory is obviously inevitable if you are this far ahead. It's a little bit like Thanos that way. Now. We have the Haymaker, and we got the Triple Panda. So Haymaker, Triple Panda, no washing machine. And on the other side, now heroic abilities are available, and that gives us still Odin. The arrow against Stukov, but he gets out. Yeah, Stukov was caught there for a second, but look at the Panda in the backline. Immediately applying pressure to Anna, and she doesn't like it at all. May doesn't like it either. She drops, but so does the panda. Try to go for the triple, try to go for the old, got interrupted, and then wasn't able to save himself here. But the same might also be true for some of the other players because Orga is in trouble. He's not the only one. Hanzo was very low in HP as well. They are getting away, and the entire focus shifts away from the immortal at this point in time. But, yeah, still looking very, very good for the blue team, obviously, since they, since they have taken the initial lead on this one. And Team Gen, what can they pull off here? We got now the full force of the red team making a move for the Immortal, but they won't be able to catch up with this. This is just not a thing. So 50% shield is what remains at the end of the day for Team Gen as they are going to push with another Immortal. And that should eliminate the bottom four fairly easily, especially since they're also taking their Bruiser camp. So this should allow them to take the fort, which means that both of the forts are gone. And maybe this time we're going to see the Triple Pandas by uh, Chen. Uh, I mean, he is applying the pressure on Anna, and that's always the problem that Anna has. The lack of mobility whenever she is getting attacked directly. One of the reasons why Falling Sword with Jojo for such a long time was super popular against her. Because it made it so difficult. Hanzo gets popped like a pimple on the other hand. But there is at least a counter kill on Mei. The fort has also fallen. So despite the... F oh my god. I was about to say, like, this is still fairly decent given that they just lost the hero. But now they killed three. They didn't only get a counter kill against Mei. They killed three. They killed four. Damn, son. They are crushing them. Oh my god. 
The red team is getting absolutely murdered here. This is not only gonna get a... They're gonna get the key. Five-man team wiped. The entire team is gone. What the hell? We're not even 10 minutes into the game, and now they got a level 13 advantage. She dropped the key at the bot lane, and they are still moving forward. Are they hoping to end the game here? They shouldn't be able to pull it off. The death timers are way too low. Muradin doesn't have mana left. And this shouldn't be a strong enough push to threaten the core. They shouldn't even be able to do any damage to it. But, yep, there it is. 98%, so 97. Lost 4% in total. Yeah, even a bit more than that. 93. Blue team is crushing it here. And on the way back, they are now taking more control by claiming the mercenary camps. So another one that they could easily log in. And yeah, here we are. Now 12 kills to 6, doubling the kill count. Still a level 13 talent advantage, not for much longer, but currently it's still available to them. And that means they can aim for another camp, which they will definitely do. There's also vision that they have at the bot lane of multiple heroes. Since they're moving as a 5-man, this cannot be contested. There's just no way. So, as is, we now have a big push through the lanes with catapults, with camps. And once the next objective is announced, this will make it difficult for the red team to take a proper position and fight back here. Bruiser is looking for the next victim. May is behind them. Has to somehow sneak in here. Yeah, and I sleep that at least. Putting the panda to sleep. And the poor Hanzo completely isolated. He goes down. Definitely got caught on the wrong foot here. No chance for him. Died five times. Hanzo does not have a good game here. I, I'm not so sure what that's going to do either. Nano boost on Tychus? What? So, yeah. Good luck with that. That is not quite as successful as they were probably imagining here. So, that's one kill, two kill, three clay. Damn, it is. Uh, they are turning this into Farmville. There's a farming simulator they're watching. Jen is going through the red team like hot butter through cheese as they are netting themselves one kill after the next. We have level 15 on the board for them, nearly level 16, and they are just crushing the opponent. Ah, I'm feeling a little bit sorry for them, honestly. That's a 9 kill difference, and if they cannot contest this Immortal, how do they plan on defending the next push? Because that is totally inevitable. With level 16, we now got the Mirror Ball in, we got the Dwarf launch as well. In comes Murden, bam, Stormbolt, Haymaker, the Dwarf is going ham! Yeah, maybe a little bit too ham. Still able to jump out. Uh, saves the day for himself as Greyman gets the objective, and that's 100%. Stormball this time missing. Hanzo has three stacks, by the way, for redemption. Only three stacks for him. He's not having a good game. He got farmed pretty hard, and all that the blue team now has to do is move towards the top and try and get the next keep and also the game. Well, there's more catapults marching through the bottom of the map. Again, there's no structure that has been lost on the blue team side, so this is just an execution that we're watching here. Huge problems for the boys in red. That might help them. A quick kill against Muradin. Oh, nice. That was well done. A good avalanche, then a quick stun, Muradin gets crushed. That's a 5 versus 4. That might have just saved them the game for now. That is making the defense at least possible. Now we're talking. Odin gets boosted. They're still trying to defend here. Yeah, Li Ming, it's all a question of whether or not she's able to get a couple of kills in before she dies. No, she doesn't. So no momentum for them either. One down, two down, it's a 5 versus 3. Yeah, they get another kill. 5 versus 2. Counter kill on Tychus. Yes, at least they get that. The keep is still in play. I mean, Greymane is trying his best to net them another kill, this time against Mei, but he's not able to get that. So now it's 4 heroes that were just dropped by the red team. Their keep is still alive, but I'm not sure they can save it. They are. <laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, wow. I was wondering if they can hold on to the game and not lose it at all here, but they even saved the keep itself. And it all was thanks to the little play that May made with Avalanche, which led to the Muradin kill. Muradin dying just shut all of them down. So, yeah, that was nicely done. But okay, 
up at the top we now have them with a few camps that are also starting to claim to uh, finally push against the blue team they're still six kills behind they're still a level behind roughly but there is an opportunity for them now at least they are playing on even talents and that's already worth quite a lot but here's the next attack that's already happening at the top and this time it's focusing on Tychus. They are desperately trying to save him here but it is a tall order. So Tychus is low but they're killing Li Ming again though. Li Ming is killed and a massive, massive play with the avalanche getting all of the pandas. Now Hanzo dies for the sixth time in a row. But the party isn't over. It's a four versus four. They're still hoping to get some damage done. Odin got boosted once again. And, well, at the bottom of the map, this is still problematic. We have now 15 minutes into the game, so these catapults are starting to become dangerous for the core. And the second catapult is already coming through, which means that the bot lane has to be defended. But if they are splitting too many heroes off down to the bottom of the map, it means that the top lane is exposed, the keep will fall. And currently, they're greedy enough to even threaten the camp, which is kind of wild. If they can get this one, that would be big. And they're really fighting it out. But they might have to give it up. Objective is up. Bot lane is still being pressured. They're retreating. Camp is taken. And Greymane... Do not tell me he's dying here. That shouldn't happen, but it does happen. Greymane is down. That wasn't necessary. And if they're losing Mirrodin now too... I have no idea what they're currently doing here. I mean, this is a game of throws at this point. They are fully inting on this one. Bot lane, Hanzo is taking care of it. He also needs to make sure that the top lane is not being attacked by that uh, by that catapult. But for some reason, the team gen decided that winning is too easy and they want to see what happens if they're losing a few heroes for a while. And, well, at least the grenade got dodged. But boy, oh boy, are they in trouble now. Still massively ahead in structures. I mean, it's not even a comparison. Structurally speaking, they're in an insane position. 121 stacks now also on the level 4, by the way. And this objective should be taken pretty soon by the red team. And they have a chance now to turn this game around. Which is wild. Considering how early the first keep was lost on the red team side, this is kind of wild. Catapults are finally obliterating the tower in the middle, so now the bot lane is going to be more of a threat. Hogga dealt with it. They're bringing this back a bit here. But this is getting interesting. <laughs> Which it shouldn't. It really, really shouldn't. Not after what we've seen in the mid game. So, uh, yeah. Level 20. About to pop up for both of them. Tychus is at 52,000. So he's easily top damage in the game now. Not only because of all the stacks that he has on his level 4. But also because he's getting consistently boosted by Anna. We got level 20. It gives us the extra stun. Nano boost gets upgraded as well. Blue team is locking it in too. Top side, that's where we still have Chen. If he pushes that out a bit further, might not even have to, then that top keep could still fall because of the catapults that will pressure there. Hoga is also starting to move top, so they might defend our top lane, which would split them a bit weak on the bot lane though. So yeah, with this catapult coming in, this is looking like the top keep is soon going to be in trouble on the red team side, unless they send somebody back. Which I don't think they are going to do. I think they're going to really try and get as much out of this push as they possibly can. They already destroyed a fort, but they have to go for more than that. So, yes, they are going to try to take that top uh, lane completely down, but it will likely result in the top key being uh, annihilated, and that, of course, then means that you have two lanes that are pressing for the core itself. So, yeah, here we are. Bottom of the map, they're starting to defend. They're starting to slowly fall back now, too. They might be too late on this. Yeah, there's one cutter pulled. And that is going to be it, I suppose. Maybe not. Depends how quickly Hanzo can get to the lane. He might, he's, he's just going to save it. Yeah, all he has to do... <laughs> Ge geometry is not his strong suit. But yeah, so... Uh, they are taking uh, this all down just in the nick of time to save the top keep. If Li Ming at any point gets close, she's just trying to unload a combo to you. And that will be the end of it. But yeah. One fort is all that the red team got. It's all that they were able to get here. So now it's just a question. I mean, it's really a bit of a team fight question. If the blue team loses another team fight the way that they did with the previous one, 
this can still be won by the red team fairly easily. I mean, all they would have to do is go to the bot lane, take that keep down that is already 50% HP, and then go for the core. But the same is pretty much also true on uh, the right side of the map, especially with this keep just being consistently exposed. And down at the bottom of the map, you have another camp that you can play through with. Uh, this one, two mini cooldowns, not going to really come into play anymore, especially with the objective now up. This objective should end it. 20 minutes in... This is a not really difficult prediction to make. Camp, they can't take it in time. Maybe if they would have been present already. But they're timing this now. They're really timing this properly around the objective. Are trying to ensure that the bot lane is going to pose a huge problem for the red team. And forces them to retreat with at least one or two of their players. And this is a big issue. Catapults, Shaman Camp. Yeah, this is really rough. They have to split somebody away. They have to move somebody down. They cannot possibly let this get to the core. Or it's going to be Winion time. So they're very much so on a timer here. And the blue team knows it. They can just slowly poke. Slowly poke it out and wait for somebody to appear at the bot lane. And currently there's nobody sent there. The red team is in just a second facing a huge problem. They are about to lose this to Winions if they don't send someone back. They need to. And I think they know it. But right now, it's not happening. They are realizing what's going on now, though. The entire team retreats. Okay. But again, this immediately triggers an attack. So the halftime show had to be given up. But yeah, this is the only play that he could make. You had to give up their position in the middle of the map. If you can, fi if you can force a fight before that, then you might have a chance. We get, by the way, the can do this all day. Haven't seen that in a hot minute. So, yeah, goes for the overkill here. But halftime show victory has now been secured by Team Gen, which means they can poke from a safe distance against the remaining hit points on the Immortal. And once they get that bad boy, oof, is the red team in for a world of pain. So yeah, Shockwave is out. Triple Panda in the back line already. Yeah, they're dealing with that as quickly as they can. And it seems that May is going to be the one to pay the price. She goes down and they... Ah, nice play here with the Wave of Force. Nicely done. Big arrow, straight in the face of Murden though, so a nice kill by Hanzo. But we're still looking at uh, four versus two as Anna dies as well. And that should have been the lights out move. I mean, now you won't be able to defend your mortal any longer. The top keep is going to fall. 40 seconds, 50 seconds on two of the heroes, even without Murden. This should be an absolute no-brainer right now for Team Gen. Now... They struggled earlier with their push, but now we're 21, 22 minutes into the game, so this entire thing is so much stronger. Hanzo won't be able to stay here alone, so the catapult can be protected, which in and of itself is already a problem. And I don't even think... Yeah, this keep is not an obstacle in the slightest. I was, if anything, surprised that nobody took it down earlier than that. I expected Li Ming to sneak in with somebody and just drop it, but they didn't. Now we have the camp up on the map, and they're killing Hanzo too! No! Hanzo, kill number seven against him, and they are also dropping Tigers. Yeah, that is all she wrote. This is the 1 0 lead for Team Gen. They are taking the victory on Battlefield of Eternity in this quarterfinal match of the winner bracket at the Happy Gaming Cup. GG, and well done. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two in the best of three, and boys, we have the teams switching sides again. So, this little trick that they're trying to pull on me is not working. Too much experience, guys. So on the left side, we have the team with a name that shall not be spoken. They are running Jojo and Leoric at the front. We get Lucio for the quick rotations on those lanes. Big map, all direct pass. And we have Tychus and Maiev. Especially liking the Maiev here. We got Jen on the other hand with Diablo, Brightwing, Dehaka. And for damage, we get a Junkrat and Hanzo. All right, it is Hanzo time once again. This time by the other team, though. Okay, so as it stands, we currently have a 1 0 lead. This is the best of three. We are in the winner bracket quarterfinal. And we still have a loser bracket here, but this is the Happy Gaming Cup, a.k.a. HGC. So definitely the Chinese players are a little bit memeing here. 
Now we have Koreans also participating in the tournament, but to my knowledge, they are not part of the teams that we've seen so far. I have to double check you later a bit. Thankfully, I have an admin that is helping me with some of the Chinese team names and Chinese player names and keeps me updated on all of this. But yeah, we'll see. Either way, we got Laws of Hope on level one for Jojo with the first stack already accumulated. They hark at the top, so they got a global. They got two globals, actually. Two globals against no globals. And it's a trap. <laughs> it's another trap. So many traps. Okay, so Junkrat already trying to junk it out a bit. We also have top sides again with the Haka, one global that could play a huge role later on in the game. Normally, when we're talking about all direct pass, the objective is getting attacked a little bit later. The most important thing at the beginning is that you're taking this camp every single time that it is available, and that's what the teams are now both doing. When the prisoners are ready, we'll see what they can do there. Normally it's like level 7, level 10 when the first moves are being made. Unless you have an Anubarak, then you can of course always cheese that a little bit. You can just walk over, solo, spawn a couple of beetles, distract those grunts and then try and uh, solo claim the camp. Which works pretty well if your opponent doesn't do anything about it, so yeah. But, well, either way, we have now, ooh, Hanzo, careful, there's a bit of, there's some reinforcements coming. Yeah, last game's Hanzo uh, struggled a little bit. Now we have sides swapped. Hanzo playing for the other team. Master Assassin, by the way, has a level 4 choice on Tychus. So we're not going into the stacks as we did the last game. But this game, more of a normal build around the attack speed that you get with the passive, which also applies to Odin. That's the main reason here. Nice push in the middle also, using all of the AoE, especially with Jojo helping them at the front line too. Diablo is still fine and Brightwing is helping out. But they're starting to get some early game momentum here. Last game was a little bit strange, honestly. Initially, it was Team Gen that just did fantastic and really played them to the wall. And then afterwards, we all of a sudden had them inting really hard and losing their entire advantage and nearly giving the game up. So that was a bit crazy. But yeah, either way, we have for now just a few skirmishes on the map. We haven't seen a single kill yet. They're trying to change that with a move for Brightwing. And you know what? That might actually work out for them. Brightwing is dead. The Fruit Fly has been eliminated. Trashwing is in the bin. And that makes for a happy day and a happy caldo. So, Fruit Fly is down. First blood has been accomplished. But this is where the red team is currently looking a little bit better. They're going for this camp and they are just faster. Because Tychus is very much alone here and they are going to lose a bit of time. It's going to be the end of the world for them. Now it's, I mean, it's not going to be too much, big of a problem. But that time advantage that we have here on the camp is going to matter if the red team is going to keep up with that as the game continues. Early level 7 though for the blue team, they're locking in uh, more talents for the grenade build with the melting point now accumulated. We got the good vibrations here for, uh, for Lucio. Um, off the wall. I mean, every single time he's talking about the good vibrations, I it, it sounds a little bit suspicious. I mean, Blizzard has so many sexual innuendos that they've hidden in the game and their talent choices. I mean, you look at Stukov and the growing infestation and you know what they're talking about. Now we're having the good vibrations here and I'm a little bit suspicious of what they were talking about. Subwoof, uh -huh. yeah, I believe you completely. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, my F goes down. Finally a counter kill for Team Gen. And as both teams have their level 7 um, in action with the ex ah, there we go, Eternal Flame, <laughs> I was just about to say. With the exception of Diablo, but yeah, he locks his talent in finally. I was already wondering if he's waiting here. That was actually a thing. In the early stages of Heroes of the Storm, we had a lot of players that would wait with their level 7 ability. The reason was actually quite simple. Most of the supports had a cleanse on level 7. And back then, you would oftentimes play, let's say, a Tyrael with potentially judgment on level 10, so the supports would wait with a level 7 pick because they wanted to see what the opponent picked on level 10 so that they could decide whether or not they needed the cleanse. 
It was pretty funny back then because there were a lot of casters that just didn't know their shit and were talking about like, Oh my god, he forgot to take his talent. I can't believe that he actually doesn't take his talent. He still didn't realize he doesn't take his talent. Very frustrating when you had to listen to it and you were just sitting there thinking like, Can you just shut the fuck up and learn the game please a little bit? I mean, you don't have to know any, everything, but a few things, please, at least. So, yeah. But either way, that was, those were pretty cool times. We had... To be fair, there are sometimes times where players literally forget to pick a talent. Where they just like thought they hit a key combination and they didn't. But that was very, very commonplace back then. Had to use it against a lot of players uh, when they were looking at stun combinations and locks. But obviously, cleanse has been changed quite a bit ever since then and you don't see it all that much. We have a few of those still left, a few of those situations. They're not really all common, but sometimes you still see it happening. Where support will hold back a few talents, but yeah, either way. Back then it was also a little bit more meme to play without talents. I still remember that in the HTC North America there was a team. Oh, was it actually for one of the tournaments? I'm not quite sure. Oh, <laughs> nice! <laughs> get wrecked, Lucio. <laughs> okay, that is one way to get a counter kill. Good arrow from Hanzo. That was beautiful. But, da -da -da -da. but yeah, check this one out. This one was glorious. I mean, doesn't get much better than that. He has the arrow and then... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the most embarrassing death ever. Oh, Junkrat, never change. Oh, that one was so good. I honestly, I if that was intentional, I, I mean, I don't think that was intentional. Hanzo was probably just trying to get the stun out to give Junkrat a chance of escaping here. But I'm just going to pretend that they properly timed this and that he saw the opportunity. You know, he sees the Matrix. He's Neo. From now on, we're going to call Hanzo Neo in this game because he can literally see everything. He knew what was happening. And it was just glorious. For that one move alone, he deserves that title. So yeah, definitely an IQ to 100 play, no doubt about it. But yeah, so we have Diaga at the bottom of the map. Again, he's going to play a bigger role even later in the game. Everybody is now focusing a little bit more on the objective. We're already at level 12, so level 10 abilities available. We've seen them in action as is. And... Choo-choo! Uh, and still with Mayev down at the bottom of the map against the Haka, and she's not really... she hasn't had the uh, impact that she wants here. Gets also a little bit threatened right now by Mr. Bruiser over here, and there's a bit of an assist. Neo is coming in to try and help out. Does... Hmm. Alright, Diablo is here. <laughs> I love the sound lines of Junkrat. I can't help it, but every single time that he's just like running around in these random laughs that he has, full Joker style, I absolutely love it. It's just so dumb. It sounds so dumb and so awesome at the same time. It's just glorious. Yeah, we got the Neo Steel coding already in. And here we go. In comes the swipe. They're going for Junkrat. And this time he gets out. This time he's able to make his way out of the fight, but both teams have level 13 talents are making their moves here. We got 13 stacks for the Laws of Hope on Jojo, which means that she's now also able to do a little bit more self-healing. But they really want this one. They are pushing in hard. Big commitment from the blue team as they're trying to pull ahead here. Nobody has taken down any forts just yet, so uh, the first objective would probably change that. There's the drag. They still have control. They might be able to get it. And there's the Entomb. Barbecue play. But yes, they can get a kill. They get Leo. Burn him down to the bone. Not that that's very difficult. And here comes right away Brightwing to say hello. All right. With that, we have an opportunity for uh, the red team to maybe return the favor here. But of course, Leo is going to be back pretty soon. But they are still controlling that space quite nicely. And it's going to be difficult for the blue team to push in properly. Only another 10 seconds that they got to buy. But yeah, they still do it. There's the drag. Okay, they go for the fight. They go for Mayev and she gets hanzo Neo comes in and takes her down. Easy peasy. Oh, that was unfortunate. That arrow, the dash out of the way. They still have the objective, so we're gonna get some raiders into play. Diablo gets also Hanzo'd. Neo is in the house and he reigns supreme. Look at this, he's even going for one of the Matrix goats. I'm telling you, 
Like, he's Neo. So, he sees it all. Playing this out perfectly. We have now five kills to two. And they have the objective going for themselves. Ez is likely going to hurt that outer ring of defense quite a bit. Wouldn't be shocked if they can take at least one of those forts down. The Haka is all alone at the bottom of the map with a radar. That one shouldn't stand a chance. Very early in the game, still with the 10 minutes on the board. But yeah, down here, this is of course a foregone conclusion. Nothing to do about this. Up at the top, Leoric overestimating his abilities a bit, I'd say. So yeah, he still has to fall back. They need someone else to help him out. And it seems that's going to be Tychus. But they might still lose some ground here. Another potential wall stun. <laughs> Tigers has very quickly decided it's a dumb idea for him to be there. Down at the bottom of the map, though, they are trying for a kill on the Haka, who's massively wasting their time, by the way. I mean, this is ridiculous. This is a two versus three, and even if the Haka dies, it doesn't matter because all he did was buy them time. So the Haka is still not dead, still alive, gets a heal, finally eats the grenade. Arrow connects again, but the top fort has fallen so two of the forts have been destroyed and even the bottom gate is taking damage that's a huge victory that was well done by the Haka. if you can waste so much time on the opponent's side that your team gets a second outer structure then you are finding yourself in a very very good spot so yeah kudos to him well played we got 41,000 damage by hanzo 36,000 by taikas level 16 is ready for team gen and uh, up at the top we got a junk rat on the rat very fitting i like this man more and more and more i mean you can argue that the kill earlier was not his but was hanzo's but yeah junk rat on a rat i mean how, how much better does he get really so yeah cams are taken and by now we also have for jojo the blessed momentum all right it's one of the words that I absolutely hate, by the way. These people that run around and always uh, tell everybody how they feel blessed because of something. Don't they piss you off too? Am I the only one that reads stuff like that I'm, and I just think like, ugh. Like, every time I see this, I'm just like, ugh, just go away. I, maybe I just hate happiness, I don't know. But, yeah. One of those things where I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Anyways, uh, mid lane fort, only one that's still standing, and apparently it's a little bit of a thorn in the side of the red team as they are now trying to make a move for that, to try and uh, take that out. They have the boss at the top that they logged in, and that is going to tie down the resources of the blue team for quite some time. But instead they're going for a double boss play, they got the top, they go for the bottom, they have the prisoner camp that is coming up in another moment, so they can go for that too. And they're just pretty much keeping the blue team on their toes. They just run from the right to the left, from the top to the bottom, always trying to defend where the next fire is raging on. And even with the defense set up properly, they lost nearly all of the top wall. So the tower or half a tower is all that's still standing there. And in the meantime, we have a play made around the middle of the map. And it seems that the blue team is thinking about going for the objective to defend the fort. Well, they're a little bit in trouble. They gotta defend this down here. The gate is already gone and you're on half HP on the tower, so that's a problem. Yeah, if they let this go alone, then they are in trouble. Now that camp is being taken. It's actually kind of funny. Team Gen is trying to consistently just set up one problem after another for the blue team. They've done this with the boss at the top, with the boss at the bottom. Now they're taking the camp in the middle. And they're just simply trying to spread them out thin, force them to focus on defense so that they have an easier access to either the fort in the middle or the objective. And one of them is what they are going to get eventually so yeah they are gonna get a keep for free if this continues i mean damn this thing is doing work and brightwing is now at the top brightwing is pushing out the top lane one of the globals is going for it and can now also assist the haka if needed but he's just going for the essence drops the old brightwing is still not assisting still not needed here Arrow, yeah, that is going nowhere. That's a big arrow, Oof, and it is still flying. They are trying to get a kill. Oh, well, the tomb, okay. I was about to say they're trying to get a kill on Tychus, but he retreated. 
that in tomb could have been a problem. Just look at the minimap though. All of the outer structures are gone with the exception of the middle that already has taken serious damage. The fort at the uh, sorry, the keep at the top is on half HP. The keep at the bottom is on half HP. They're taking my F down. They're burning the entire team to a crisp. It's six kills to three in total. And we have them on, well, close to level 20 now. So with a talent advantage, it could get even more out of that. They are also looking for the objective. I mean, it, the entire world is burning if you are on the blue team. Everywhere you look, there's a problem that you gotta solve somehow. The fort in the mid lane is now lost to you. The objective is about to be gr uh, grabbed. You have Leo trying to defend the top lane. And the red team has not only stolen your camp away, but also gotten level 20. So with Storm Talons, uh, yeah. Bright being with the invisible friends. Another name would have been imaginary friends because Bright just doesn't have any friends. So of course they're invisible. Duh! But now they go, yeah, oh boy, I, this is rough. This is looking more and more like it could really be a 2-0 victory for Team Gen against their opponent on the left. Because, yeah, 15 minute objective, 16 minute objective, you have two keeps that have already lost 50% of their HP. How are you going to hold on to that? If you lose both, then that's two armor shields that are gone on the core here on Alderac Pass which pretty much means that any push for core might end the game. Now, the regenerative abilities of the core are always kind of nice, but I don't really get the impression that the red team is going to hit for it anytime soon. 56,000 damage for Hanzo. Tigers is going for the mid lane defense with Odin, but yeah, good luck now. Now they're burning this one down. The mid lane keep, they might be able to hold on to that. I'm more worried about the other lanes. But they have actually delayed the top lane quite significantly. So who knows, maybe they're able to pull this off after all. It's half a level until they reach level 20, so that's an issue. Yeah, this one's gone. You can't forget about the top keep. Bottom keep, also highly questionable. A little bit of range damage is all that's needed here to make sure that this falls. And yes, one armor shield is already down. Top is gonna fall. So two of the armor shields are gone, and if there's a kill... Oh, Brightwing with a big save for now. And then my F comes in and BAM! Takes the fruit fly down. And once again, a kill like this is saving them the game here. This is missing on the other hand, but they might be able to get... Yeah, they do. They get Diablo. So the core is obviously losing hit points here, but this shouldn't really be a big problem. They're going to be able to save that. Leo Dias gets hanzo here, but he's going to be back very, very quickly, so that's not a problem. They have no real chance to do damage, though. It's level 20 versus level 20, and the big problem for them is that they are... They, I mean, they lost everything with the exception of the mid lane keep. They themselves have not taken a single structure down yet, and now we're having the Haka maybe even looking to go for the boss after the camp in the mid lane has been taken. So Team Gen might not have been able to go for the core, but they are still very, very much in control of the game. Structurally, it is not even close. It's ridiculous. Seven kills to five. Honestly, if you just look at the kill count, you're kind of missing the bigger picture here. But with 29 stacks now on the Laws of Hope, that's a little bit of self-sustain that we have for Jojo. Talking about sustain and healing, Lucio nearly got nailed there by Hanzo. I gotta say that Hanzo is crushing it in this game. Hasn't died once. So, yeah, again, team switched sides. So last game's Hanzo was playing for the now blue team. But this one kind of knows what he's doing. And again, because it was so fucking funny, look at this kill again in the early game. Look at this one. This one was just glorious. Watch the minimap. Here comes the arrow. Jugrat and bye-bye, Lucio. <laughs> that was so freaking good. Yeah, now they're forcing a fight again with the disc. Oh, Diablo actually gets tethered in as he tries to Hellgate out. And Tomb comes in too. Ah, but here we are. Another big play. This time it's Joja that gets hit by the Riptire. And she gets hit hard. The barbecue burns my F to a crisp. And now the lanes are fully open. They can go for a game here. Leo is in trouble trying to get away too, but he can't. So that's a triple kill. And it doesn't get any better for me. I honestly don't even know why they're going for the objective here. They could just go for the core at this point. Two of the armor shields already gone. The core losing hit points as we speak to the bot lane push. There's absolutely no need to go for the boss and the objective. Nothing wrong with it either. But this is the final nail in the coffin. 
Unless they are somehow inting against the boss itself, this is a no-brainer. Leo sniffs all of this out. The Haka is playing this out at the objective, and now he's going to get the rest of the team helping him. But yeah, this this can't be this can't be won anymore. They could have just gone for the core. They, they literally had everything that they needed to end the game. But this is, I guess, making it an even safer play. If you're the blue team, you are, of course, in what we call in professional circles, deep shit. Because you have this marching towards your core, and you kind of need to defend. At the same time, you can't uh, give them the objective. So, oh yeah, what are you going to do here? Objective is about to be taken. Arrow is in. There's another stun. They're buying more time. Core is losing hit points. Rip tire. Yeah, comes in first. They're going for Lucio. Objective has now been taken too, so they're just wasting time. The core is being attacked, and the fight pretty much doesn't matter anymore. I also want to shout out Tigers real quickly because he hasn't fallen yet. So if they can get a kill against him, that would be the first death of Tigers on the blue team side. He's the only real survivor that they have. But while this fight is raging on, they are literally losing the game. The objective hasn't even arrived yet, but the core is already falling. So are Tigers, first death for him, Jojo, and I guess Leo. The keep is about to be gone. I mean, this is, this is just it. They're getting slapped around hard now. That's game. 2-0 victory for Team Gen. They advance to the winner bracket semi-final. GG. Well played. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.